and we're excited to have you here. Okay, so we should be recording. Welcome everyone to Advising at PSU. And so I'm Matt Cheney, Director of Interdisciplinary Studies, and this is Kelsey Donnelly from ACAC. ACAC, Academic and Career Advising Center. I am the Director of Advising. Matt and I have been doing this presentation for years now. <laughs> Pre-COVID. You no, know, yeah. it's something I look to forward to every year. <laughs> We've got a good song and dance going. So, <laughs> yeah, and we, you know, we do update it every year because everything changes. It does. Might change again. You know, we'll update it on the fly. We will let you know if anything changes. But it has happened. <laughs> We're going to go through a lot of information, so feel free to stop us at any point if things are not clear or um, where it's just too much. Because. Um, all of this will be available to you. We'll send out a link. Um, we keep it as a resource on the CoLab webpage. Uh, so we'll have a recording. We'll have this whole slide deck and some other links to useful things for you. Um, so we tend to take this hour and just like throw as much information as we can out there. Um, but do let us know if anything isn't clear or you want, want more about something. So first off, first question is how do students find who their advisor is and their schedule? Um, and we'll get to how do you find who your advisees are in a moment. So Kelsey, do you want to take us through this? I do. So there are multiple ways where students can find who their advisor is. I will say that this is actually probably the number one question our office has been getting these past couple of weeks. Um, so is that, I think- is that like, is that usual? I mean, it feels more enhanced right okay. now that students are like, I don't know who my advisor is. So I kind of went into like, what's how do we how do we make up? this from not happening? So I guess here I'll just do my plug in, make sure if you're an advisor that you are reaching out early and often to your advisees. I can't stress that enough. Like students, as soon as they start the semester should know who their advisor is and how they can get in contact with them. But at this point, like there are three ways really that students can find who their advisor is um, through degree works, which is actually our number one way we're referring students right now, just so they also can see who their advisor is, but also get acclimated to degree works at the same time because there's so much important information on there. Um, they can also find it in the Navigate app. At this point, most students have downloaded this app and are using it. Um, especially first year students, because there's so much information students can find in the app, like what their classes are, where their classes are, who their advisor is. And the third way An is, important point about the Navigate app is that faculty don't have access to it. So that's um, true. you can tell your students to go do it. It's important. We do it at freshman orientation, but we don't have access. To it. Right. Yeah. And students, they have to, like, once they're in the app, they have to select courses and that's where they see the advisor. It's not on the front screen, slightly hidden, but it's there. Um, and then the third way is through self-service PSU a bit longer, but if they go on the left-hand side of the My Plymouth, select self-service PSU, academic record registration, they'll see their advisor on that page. And then also on that slide um, is how students find their schedule. That's question we get usually at the beginning of semesters, not so much now in the middle, but following those same steps, going to student academic record and registration, that's where students can see their schedule as well. Then on our side, how do we find who our advisees actually are? Um, you would think that would be easy. <laughs> uh, it's, it's not. Easy. No, it's pretty easy. It's, it's not. Yeah. Um, <laughs> the the Best way probably is to use Navigate, you think? So yeah, there are two ways to do it. Right now, I I think the most easiest and effective way to find your list of advisees is through Navigate. It pulls a list of your active students that have classes that are registered for classes. You can export it into Excel so you can manipulate the data. You can get their email. You can text and email right from Navigate. So it really is the easiest way to contact your advisees. If you want to find your list of advisees in Banner, they are there. It's just a little challenging. As soon as you click on um, my list of advisees, you will probably get a lot longer list than you actually have if you've been here a while and have had multiple advisees. Yeah, that's where it's so confusing. It is. Um, so 
these filters do work. I ran these the other day and my number matched my Navigate number. So if you can use these filters to find your banner, um, to find your students in banner, um, that works. There is an export button. You go to the settings up top and hit export advise you list. I will be honest, it didn't work for me um, yesterday when I tried to export. I was trying like all the yesterday. Yeah. Trying to figure it out. Not... I don't think that is working for some reason. Yeah. Um, so I am team navigate when it comes to finding your advise you list. Right. Why would I choose not to? I mean, I've used Navigate since day one. I probably sent four, five, six texts out to the group and stuff. It's so simple as Navigate, so it's right there, like a button that all lit up. Why would I not do that? Then? Why would I choose to go this other way? Because well, there, is there so for there those that have been here for a long time, that's how we used to do it. That's oh, how we used to go, and we could get um, emails yeah. and we could get pins for it our students. So all easy. That. But Eight there was an update. Like, it would get through this. You could cut and paste it, drop it in any document oh, okay. you wanted. Yeah. It was all this great you get all your class rosters, everything that just in Banner. And then um, Banner yeah. decided that that was too useful. It, it had an upgrade <laughs> that <laughs> moved us backwards a little bit, but same. Uh -huh. you get on every phone call. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. That's the one. But honestly, like just use Navigate. You can do all what you could do in Banner and more. Yeah. But you know, people who have been here a long time. Like there's a learning curve with Banner if you haven't used it yet. But if anybody wants to learn Navigate and wants to sit down and go over it, I am more than willing to. It's one of my favorite things to do is just go through the systems with everybody. She just goes home and plays around with Navigate. <laughs> <laughs> Get the kids stuffed animals around. Keep telling my secrets. <laughs> yep. All right, so then it's how do students actually register for courses, which they're going to be doing um, in a few weeks. And this still is through Banner. Um, and it is, and again, some of this is a little challenging because we don't have all the same access to see things that students do, though it's gotten a little bit better. I noticed last spring during advising time, actually, I was able to do a lot that and I don't think I have special access. I don't think Tanya was like, stop Matt from complaining. Nope, and gave me access or something. I think it's been streamlined. Yeah. So we do have a little bit more access than we used to, um, which is good. Um, so this is really just through Banner and through self-service. Um, again, through the same spot, student academic record, registration. You can also just type register, of course, in the search bar on the new My Diploma. Yeah, and later on, we can give a quick which demo. We can show that's how I tend these days with so many different apps and stuff. I'm using the new mindfulness search bar for a lot of things just because it's so much faster to get to stuff. Mm -hmm. You just start typing a few word, a few letters, and it brings it right up. And they're really great. Like if you search for something and it doesn't show up, like a quick ticket, and it shows up very soon after. Mm -hmm. So if they're, you're trying to search for something that's not there, they're really quick to get those added. Yeah. Um, and then it's just um, search for browse classes to look at what's available. And we have the same access, I think, that students do to that at this point. Yeah. Um, and then uh, register for classes once uh, registration opens up. And I often will have my advisees have that open on their laptop in the office and in case they, they encounter any trouble figuring it out. Because there is one, you have to hit the submit button twice. Okay. And they sometimes don't do that. So. Mm -hmm. Should be like once, a, but is it one? it's just once. But if they okay, yeah, you just have to make I'm sure you hit submit. Yeah. All right, advising week. Speaking of what's coming up, um, next week, Monday, October fourteenth, the first day of advising weeks. We have two weeks of advising, um, and this is an opportunity for you to connect with students about all the stuff. When do six week grades come out? That this is, Friday. Is it Friday? This Friday. Perfect. They're due for us Thursday, but they roll That's up what Friday. I was thinking. Um, so you'll have six week grades, which is a great thing to talk with students about, as well as um, all sorts of other stuff, such as uh, should they take a second half semester course? Is there is that going to be useful for them? There's a link um, on the advising tab in my Plymouth, which we'll show you. Uh, once we get out of the PowerPoint, you can talk about classes for next semester, go over where they're at, look at their degree works with them. Um, they they come primarily to get their PIN. Uh, and the PIN is a, we use it in this office, we're absolutely religious about not giving out PINs on email 
um, because we want our students to come in and actually talk with us. Um, very occasionally we'll have someone in dire straits and we'll send them their pin on email. But for the most part, we really use the pin as a way to uh, coerce the students into coming in and having a, an in-person conversation. Um, we'll wait for it. Yeah, oh, the great <laughs> revelation will come. <laughs> yes, um, you will get you will get all of your students' pins. Um, it's a, also a great time to check on their overall project and also track who plans to to leave. If students are thinking about leaving, um, that can be a great conversation. And there, there are things to do with that information as well. What am I missing there? I think that's pretty good. Excellent. Um, so October 14th to October 25th, all advising time. So the great question, how do we get pins? <laughs> uh, so they are available for, their, for you under advisor services. Um, but also that can be a little clunky. Yeah, I find. And but thankfully, ACAC are the angels of ACAC send <laughs> out. <laughs> the Excel document. So then yeah. you can yes. Yeah. So right now you can look up pins through self-service um through the, it, it's advisor slash faculty. I have to update that from last year, but now it's advisor slash faculty services. Um you can go in and you can type in the name of a student look up that student and in the upper left, upper right, I have to put my hand up, upper right hand corner, there's a drop down menu and you can see the pin for that student. So you have the ability to look up individual pins for your advisees, that's fine. But you don't have the ability to run a list of pins for all your advisees, but we do send out an Excel list that has all of your pins and the registration dates for your students. It comes as one big Excel. Excel, we upload it into the advising teams page. In that Excel, we have their pins and registrations on one tab. We'll have which of your students have holds on another tab. And we will have, there's another thing. There's another tab. So financial holds. Oh, six week grades, we also put on that one. So you'll have a comprehensive sheet that gives you like your advisees and a snapshot. So I'm okay. the holds. I wrote down for the financial bill not paid, parking ticket, library book missing. Is that is there are there other holds? There are many types of holds. Uh, <laughs> um there is something like 70 categories oh, of holds. Okay, right. <laughs> <laughs> we don't use them all. Um uh, but what we, what we, we tell students is just contact Student Financial Services if you, if they have a financial home. And then that's how, is that a sequential? You type my, in the mic one, it's a self-service, and then you know, it gets you to the next search window and you put in advisor slash services? No, those are links. So you start on my Plymouth, and then on the left-hand side, there's it's self-service PSU, okay. um, and then advisor services. But it's now actually my Plymouth, and then faculty slash advisor services. Okay. And then um, my advice is the top and then, and then, We'll give a quick demo. And then you click on one, and, and then you said you get the pen. Do you also get the date? Yes. Oh, so that's there as well. Yeah. 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 If you're just looking for one student, it's a it's a pretty good way to see all their info. Yeah. Um, but the Excel sheet is really helpful when you're going from meeting to meeting to meeting. Yeah. And can you you can download the Excel. You can download the Excel and then pull out all your people. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Yep. Yeah. I download it and and delete all of the rows I don't need. Yes. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I do the same. I, I minimize all of them. So. Yeah. Quick question for you from you, all of your experience. How much time am I setting aside per student on average? What am I thinking? 20 minutes, half hour? I'd say 20 minutes yeah. on average. Yeah. 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 I we book out here. We do them in thirty minute meetings. Okay. They aren't all thirty minutes, um, but that seems to be a, a good amount. Because if a student needs much more than that, that's sort of like another meeting. <laughs> yeah. um, for advising and during advising weeks, we mostly aim for about thirty minutes. Yeah, and yes. for you to get like your groove, you might want thirty minutes. I'm not sure what your right how yeah. many like advisees this. you have, but like yeah. just to yeah. like get things going. I yeah. find that I have them, but I email when I communicate with them. I always say, "Here are the things you need to have for our appointment." 
And if they come in and they don't have any of it, then I go, you don't really have to talk about, you need to navigate these things. So why don't you go do that? And when do you want to meet again? You know, because there are a, there are students who want you to do their schedule for them. Yes. And that, that, that sounds that is, is there a definitive list of what they should show up with? Like, is that, is this just yours or is there a list of what they should? I they have the ability to look up what they need, degree works, is like the bombs. They will, they, they have to know how to do it, make sure that they do degree works. That's in my email as well. Go to degree works, make sure you have an account, your account is open and you've activated it and and they can kind of navigate through it. Yeah. It's different program by program. Yeah. Um, and also for undeclared students can be a bit more of a challenge that way. Um, because they're still exploring. Right. Um, you know, we have very specific processes in this office for our students because IDS is a is a weird major. Um most majors have a whole degree process. So we have um, registration forms for each major that can help as a checklist when going over stuff. So that's another thing we'll yeah, show okay. in a little, little while. But before we go over this, like one thing with these meetings that you give out your pin, my philosophy, I know some are different, but I just need to make sure that they know what they need to register for and how. I really want to they mm -hmm. I want to make sure that they know how to go through the registration process and that they have a list of classes to find. But I don't need a complete schedule. I don't need to know like Right. When you're taking what, I just yeah. need to make sure that you can go create your schedule on your own. That helps my meeting go a little faster. Yeah. If I changed it from a, like, no, like, you have time in your day. You should take this, 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 this. It's better if you just. Yep. Different, yeah, and different advisors have different styles. Some, you know, even within our office, I know some of our advisors like to sit down with absolutely everything. And others are just more like, do you know what your pin is? Do you know? What you're gonna do? Okay, great. Go have fun. Register for classes. Yes. <laughs> um, so it depends sort of on what your own style and and the, what the student seems to need as well. Right. So other than a freshman, I assume they're teaching each other and talking, and were they able to say that go and they just know what to do? Depends on the student. Some are certainly by the time they're seniors, you hope that they have yeah. <laughs> some experience with registering for classes and choosing classes. Um, it depends. Every student's different. Yeah. If they're really anxious, then I'll sit with them longer and, and sort of work through stuff. Um, but if they seem like they've got it figured out, then no need to waste both of our times. Yeah, there's definitely seen some meet with multiple times. Yeah. To yeah. rest their anxiety, help them through the process. Some just want someone sitting with them so that you know they know exactly what they need to do. They just need some reassurance. Yeah. All right, registration dates. These are fun because it can feel a little like it's completely uh, chaotic, but there is a, a logic behind uh, registration dates and who gets to register when. So um, first, typically what happens for each student has, has one week to register before um, it opens up for everybody until at drop ends. And so the first ones, um, Monday, October 28th, is the first day anybody can register at 7 a.m. That's through Friday the 1st at 4.30. Uh, and this is athletes, uh, students who are on the president's and dean's list based on their spring 2024 grades, um, and any of whom have 60 or more earned credits. Also, all students registered with campus accessibility services, regardless of how many earned credits they have. These and are the trio. Yeah. And trio, yes. Um, these are the students who have the very first day who can register on the very first day. Um, the second day is open to all students with 60 or more earned credits, and that goes through Friday the 1st at 4.30. One thing to note with students is a lot of students don't know the difference between earned credits and in-progress credits. So they will think, they will say, I'm a junior. Why can't I register on Tuesday the 29th? And you then go and look it up and it's, oh, they haven't actually gotten to 60 earned credits yet. Even if DegreeWorks might say they have 72 because they're taking, you know, 14 this term, actually they only have earned 58. Um, so that can be confusing for students because they tend to think in um, first year, sophomore, junior, senior, whereas for us, it's all just credits. So that if once they have 60 earned credits, then they're up for that first week. Then on Friday, November 1st, it turns off for them. 
and they can't register again for a few more weeks. So this is something, um, and this is very intentional. We spent lots of time talking in the Academic Affairs Committee about this. Um, it's very intentional because we want as many students registering during registration time as possible. It lets us know what courses are gonna look like for the coming terms. Um, so it turns off for them. And this you should emphasize with your students. It's like, get them while you can, because then you're gonna have to wait almost a month to be able to register for anything um, once it's not your week. Then the second week is November 4th, Monday, November 4th at 7 a.m. it starts through November 8th at 4.30 is for, again, athletes, presidents, and deans list um, based on spring 2024 grades, uh, but ones who have fewer than 60 earned credits. Then on that Tuesday, it opens up to all students with under 60 earned credits. And then turns off again on Friday, November 8th at 4.30 p.m. And then we get the fun time we call problem solving week. So this is a time when all registration is closed. Nobody can register. There are no exceptions made. The students will often ask for exceptions for one reason or another, you know, illness or family emergency or something. The Office of Academic Affairs is not interested in granting exceptions during problem solving week. Uh, they've made that very clear. And there's a good reason for it because this is the time for everybody to figure out what's going on with stuff they can't register for. If they have financial holds, if they need to connect with a professor for an override, et cetera, this sort of creates an even ground for everybody because nobody can register during this time. Then after problem solving week, it opens up on November 18th at 7 a.m. for everybody. Go at it. Everyone can start registering and adding and dropping all the way through uh, the end of ad drop in spring 2025. The reason we do this model is to incentivize students to register. We found a while ago that students would just not do it. They would wait and wait and wait and wait. And that became a problem for us. So we changed the model to like, you have a week. And if you don't get it done in that week, like you're, you're penalized. You have to wait until it opens up for everybody. And it actually drastically increased the amount of registrations we had. So it is working, even though it might seem a bit weird that we do this way. I think it was weirder when we had been doing it the other way and then we shifted to this. And so just the transition was hard. I don't find it particularly challenging with students anymore. Mm -hmm. And it's doing it. Academic Affairs Committee ran the numbers and it really has helped a lot with yeah. getting students to register. And we need that because we need the information on course registrations once it comes time to, one of the problems we were running into was what courses do we cancel for under enrollment? Are students actually going to register for them? Because so many students were holding off to register until the last minute. So it's really helpful to everyone to get as many students registered during the registration time as we can. All right, but inevitably, Classes end up full, and this is a new thing. So, and I don't know anything about it. No, so, it comes brand out of new slide entered this morning. <laughs> uh, but this is a great thing. So, can you run us through what's going on here? Sure. So we we've done this in the past, but I think we're looking to make it more official um, and well known. We do find that often there's a lot of courses that are full that students need, students want. We just kind of want to get a pulse on what classes you know, students are looking to get into so we can make a case. Um, if there's a lot of demand, maybe we can ask about increasing caps or opening another section. OAA is really receptive to recommendations like this. So this is just to kind of add some like backing about why we're requesting these additional courses. But this is uh, this is Trump speaking previously you get an email from a student asking just for an enrollment overload. Overload. So if a student, you are still very welcome to give the student an override into your class, like definitely welcome that. But if a student is not able to get into it, um, or if you're being asked for a lot of right, overloads, just throw it in. Yeah. You shut it down. You can fill up the form and chuck yeah. it in saying, I've had seven and I can only let in two. Or yeah. Okay. That's, yeah, that's, that's so perfect. Just monitoring that so, we can find a place for those other five, maybe another section or whatever. That's yeah. Good. And this is for advisors, you know, faculty and students to fill out as well. Yeah. It'll be good information for that term in case there is a huge demand and we could open a whole new section and get it well populated. 
but it's also good for future planning of knowing what kind of courses are actually in demand. So this is just me doing this as in, like I get, as, as a club, it just advises us, so as a professor, I mean, I get seven kids, I turn down five. Am I writing that form out with five, or how am I getting those five names on the form if I'm not listed as a... So there's, in there, there's, um if it's multiple classes, so it's the form basically asking for the course name and code, and but there's multiple options to add multiple classes on there. Out, the, yeah, an advisor? we'll send it to, like... Oh. Faculty and advisors. Yes, good call. All right, withdrawals have changed a little bit too. Um, so the withdrawal deadline is now uh, December 2nd at 4 30. So students have um, freedom to withdraw from classes. They get the W on their transcript, but um, they can withdraw up to uh, December 2nd. Uh, they don't need to do a form anymore. This is the big change. The registrar's office does not want the forms. Uh, it can be done in the same way that they register for classes, and it's really easy. Um, same way that they would withdraw during ad drop, they would drop during ad drop. Um, so this can be a this is a great way to um, for students if they need to withdraw. It's super simple. They just go in, drop the class. Um, it's important for them to know that there may be financial implications that these uh, credits stay as part of their schedule during that term, because a lot of students don't know the difference between a drop and a withdrawal. A lot of faculty don't know the difference between a drop and a withdrawal. Drops are very, very rare um, because for financial aid reasons. A withdrawal still counts those as credits attempted during the term. So a student, the students will often say, oh no, I can't withdraw from this class because then I'll be under 12 credits and I won't be full time anymore. But they actually will because it's still credits attempted. Uh, it also runs into a problem if they, let's say, have you know 18 credits and they withdraw from two and they want to add a four credit course in its place, um, they're gonna go into overload with that because it's still um, seeing them as attempting that larger load. Um, so there may be financial implications. It's always worth having students think through that, even contact. I've had students contact student financial services, especially if they were concerned about a scholarship or something like that. Um, and then there is a one pager uh, that's linked from these slides that you'll be able to see. Um, we'll also put it on our resource page. And one great way if students are worried about making up credits and they still have some room in their schedule, um, second half courses are, can be a really a godsend for them. Yeah, there's one credit, two credit, three credit, and four credit options. So like even if a student is in 16 and withdraws, taking a two credit option will help make that gap a little yeah. better. And at least it's something. All right. So when we talk about advising, we're talking about holistic advising, which is not just, you know, helping students register for classes and giving them their pin. I think often we think in in universities is the job of the advisor is to help students choose classes and get them registered for it and then your job is done. And that may have been true a long time ago, but one of the things that we are seeing is that having an advisor who's paying some attention to the other stuff in a student's life can make a huge difference, um, both in their general happiness, but also in their academic work and their academic progress here. This doesn't mean being an expert in everything. I'm not a social worker. I'm not a psychiatrist. I can't help with all sorts of challenges that students are facing. Um, but I do know how the university works and where to refer students to. Um, so this is one of the key things is that being the referral agent for your advisees, it can be a wonderful benefit to them so that they don't have to think about, oh my God, I'm having this one crisis, who do I even talk to about that? If they can just think about, here's something going on in my life, I got to ask my advisor about that, this, and then you can help them figure out who on campus or in the world um, can help them with whatever their issue is. That's a great benefit that we can offer to our students. What am I missing there, Kelsey? <laughs> well, no, I think that's good, just helping the students feel heard and helping them when you feel like they might need a little extra assistance. And just also how confusing the institution of college can be, especially for younger students, but also for some of the older ones. They don't, they aren't born into understanding this weird institution and this weird world. 
um, especially for our first generation students, this is a hugely alienating, strange place. And so having one person in mind who can really help you through some of that strangeness and alienation um, can do wonders for students. But what do you talk with them about? This is maybe my favorite slide, <laughs> I have to say, in the deck. And it's all Kelsey, because one of the things I find of like, you know, you have your meeting, your student comes in, they're great, they've, they've organized everything, they've, they've set up the time, they come in right on time, but then what do you say? Other than just, so what are you thinking about for classes? Um, which can be a good thing, but there are so many other things you can talk with them about and open up conversations. So there's a lot of stuff here. I wonder from you, Kelsey, do you have a particular favorite? I do. So I feel like the one I ask a lot, well, honestly, like I ask quite a bit of these each time I meet with students. Um, are you eating is oddly a big converse, conversation starter. Like the, the, I get very surprising answers a lot of the time. So it feels weird to like throw it in there, but like, how are things going? How's life on campus? How's D Hall? Are you eating? And then you'll get this look like, um, how many times a day are you eating? You know, it it kind of propels. Sometimes it's fine, but other times you know if something's off. But my favorite question on a scale from one to ten, what is your experience at PSU so far? And they'll think about the number and process it and they'll say seven. I'm like, all right what will make it a 10? And that really gets to what might not be going well. So then I can help <laughs> solve, maybe try to help if they need resources, I can help connect them to resources or just listening to what's going on. It's my favorite. Yeah. I like that one a lot. I've started using it Yeah. Um, ever since we started doing these things. So um, it's a great one because it opens it up to the student to sort of define the conversation for you. They don't have to talk. If there's you're not probing them for anything sensitive. They're choosing what it is. Yeah. Uh, so it works really well. All right. So here are some links. We'll show you some of these as we go forward, but these are also available um, to you from here, um, which are things that we find useful um, to have at hand. Um, and I'll also so show you one of the ways that I keep stuff at hand for um, for meetings, so I don't have to, you know, have memorized all of these things. Um, but there's a bunch of tools out there that are really useful to you. The most recent one is the course registration info from the home courses. Um, I think that is that the one I just sent you. Yeah. Yeah, that's something um, John Krukerberg uh, created a great web page. Um, that has some some links out to all of the various general education courses here, which can be a big question. As soon as they'll be like, oh, I have to get a creative thought direction. How do I find a creative thought direction? Um, this is a, a this has all of those links and all of that information. It's great. What else should we highlight here before we, we show um, some of these? Honestly, I think we're about to show almost all of this. Okay. So. <laughs> Um, first off, Degree Works. I think we hopefully know how to find that um, from my Plymouth. Um, oh, that's an interesting point, too, to think about is transcripts and Degree Works go hand in hand. Can you talk a little bit more about that, Kelsey? Oh, I stumped Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Why did we put I mean, that on there five I, years I, ago? I, oh, I, I really just think like the courses that students are taking and getting credit for are the ones showing up on their transcripts. Um, so I think when students are like looking at degree works, I think they just need to be aware that, you know, these are basically the courses that are going to be showing up in your transcripts. Other than that, I have no idea what I think. <laughs> um, but some of the other cool functions of degree works that I use all the time, what if I work with the undeclared population? So doing some exploratory like courses and majors with students is good. Um, it now you're able to add minors, which before you weren't. Yeah, that's great. So this is a cool upgrade for degree work. So you can actually input minors and see if any classes that the students have taken would apply towards that minor. But the one I use the most is probably the GPA calculator. If a student wants to know like how their semester is gonna land, just project ahead a little bit about how you're doing in these classes. I, I do it almost daily with students. I'm mm -hmm. like, well, let's hop into degree works. Um, if you get a B in this class, a C in this class, a B in this class, an A in this class, 
this is the GPA you'll end with because it takes your current GPA, the classes that you're in, and calculates it for you. Super helpful, just a cool thing for students to be able to visualize. Okay, in order to get the GPA I want, I need to get these grades. Um, the only thing it doesn't do is calculate retake. So if a student is retaking a class they didn't do well in, the degree works calculator doesn't calculate that. Um, but ACAC created a GPA calculator um, for repeated courses. So we use that so much in the summer. It's really handy. Um, so yeah, check that out if you ever have any students retaking classes and you want to try to figure out what their GPA will be. All right, so we have a bunch of stuff in the following slides we're not going to spend time on because otherwise we'd be here for two more hours. Um, but there is, we wanted to, to present as much info as we possibly could for you. So the stuff you'll see is some information on keeping students in the loop. Um, some, what do you do with students you have concerns about behavioral concerns, significant academic concerns. Um, that's the care process and frost test. Um, how to get students involved in clubs and career opportunities. There are lots of, of fairly new tools for helping students see what's available um, and connecting them with careers and with clubs. Uh, student, what does we do if students want to change their major? Um, we support them. There are lots of tools around that. Helping students who are in academic difficulty, some ideas around that, and then the financial implications of various choices that they make. So many different things can have financial implications and students may not be thinking about that at all. So all of that stuff is a series of slides um, throughout the rest of this. And we'll um, send this out to, to all registered folks and it'll also be archived on the CoLab page. So you'll be able to get this um, slide deck. But I think right now what we wanna do is show you some of this in action. So I have to, um, if we can vamp while I stop sharing and yeah, open questions up my so web far. Well, Matt goes to his homepage. Yeah, I think my phone. Um, I have a question, and I it might be something that you talked about earlier. Is there a way on um navigate for me to send? like the same text or the same email to all of my advisees, or do I have to like copy and paste it? Nope, you can send one text to all advisees. Okay, you so I like clicked on each one of their, like the little box next to each one of their names. Is there a box give... up there? There's a box actually up top that if you click it, it will automatically check off everybody's. And then you go oh. to the app button. Yeah, we can show that when we get to navigate. Yeah. Okay, uh, thank you. I'm just going to start from just the dashboard of my Plymouth. I don't know if it's even still called my Plymouth, but I, I call it my Plymouth. I'm always going to call it my Plymouth. Um, and this is the place where that search bar is so helpful because you can just start typing in degree words. And eventually, when it thinks about it, it'll come right up and you can get to it um, or register for classes. Register. Yeah. Register um, for a course. Register for a course. It's probably the best one. Yep. Lots of stuff. But then also the shortcuts on the side. So these are the shortcuts I have set up that are, are useful to me. So I don't have to type in degree works all the time. I just have it over there. Um, navigate, of course, um, and faculty banner. Those are very important ones. But of course, ACAC as well, the registrar, et cetera. Things I tend to use most frequently, I made into shortcuts over on the side. Yeah, those are perfect shortcuts for advisors. All right, so do we wanna to go to navigate first? Let's go to navigate. Okay, I'm gonna use my shortcut. <laughs> See if it works, I haven't tested this in a few weeks. Well, you know, I might have to sign in. Nope, More now. excellent. Okay, so now we're in navigate. This is just sort of where we land. What should we do, Alfie? Let's say I wanted to email or you text all. You have a lot all... less things than I do. I want to get into that. I do. You have superpowers in navigate. Like there's some stuff I feel like you should have. Um, okay, so to answer your quick question right here, 
Um, this is the list of all advisees. Matt, can you click the box next to name? Right there. That's right there. That's going to highlight everybody. Then go to actions. Right above it. Um, um, down. Like right above the box you just clicked. Oh, I see. I there always you go. missed that. Actions. Send a message to student. And here you can send either a text or an email. And that will go to everybody you have checked out. Yeah. So I've got 69 students there. I could email them or I could send them all a text message. One thing. Okay, um, perfect. One thing to note with text messages is that you should identify yourself because it's going to come from a weird phone number. Smart. Um, so <laughs> I always will start out with, hi, this is Matt from IDS. Uh, you have limited, you know, have only 300 characters, so you can't go into lots of stuff. But I just say, hi, it's Matt from IDS. Here's the thing. Like, often I'll just tell them, please check your email. <laughs> um, the, okay. First off, it used to be 150 characters, so 300 is... Oh, so oh, refreshing. Yes. Um, but I have found I very rarely send emails anymore because the engagement I get with a quick text has just like I will send an email and get crickets. I will send a text and instantly have my inbox filled with hundred text messages back. Yeah. Okay, good to know. Thank you. You're welcome. We use it a lot here. Even if like if a student hasn't shown up for something that I expect them to be at, I will just text them through Navigate and be like, hey, why aren't you at expert advice right now? Yep. <laughs> um, and often the response is, oh, totally forgot. Or I'm down in the art studio doing actual good work. I don't want to come see you. You could change your <laughs> profile picture. So nice picture. <laughs> yeah, that, that, it is a nice picture because it's 15 years old. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so can you click on appointments? Yeah. I don't know. You'll probably have some in there, right? Um, if you scroll down to recent appointments. So if if you use Navigate to have students set up appointments, yeah. they would show up here. Um, and you can either you can click on the student, go right to them, um, see everything you need to know about the student. But then you can also just write notes about the appointment by going to that action box right there. It's just a really cool way to keep everything all in one spot. It is. Yeah, we use bookings for us um, because Martha sets up a very complicated bookings system for us. But yeah. otherwise, I would use um, Navigate. And then, like, my availability is how you set up when students can book appointments for you. So if they don't have full access to your calendar, you can set parameters of when you want them to and not to. We could set up a campaign to send out to your advisors. Like, if you're like, oh, here's all my advisees. I want them to come meet with me these next two weeks for registration. We could set up a quick campaign and basically the rest of the work is done for you. It will send, like you can send quick nudges to anybody who hasn't booked an appointment. You can easily track who's come and who hasn't. Um, but I think that's navigate. Yeah, it can be nice also to use the personal availability link um, mm -hmm. in your email signature or on a syllabus. Um, yes. as a way to to help students um, make appointments with you. Yeah, want to meet, use the link below. Again, more than willing to help set anybody up with this. It really does make advising easier. Yeah. Okay, so let's go back to our My Plymouth dashboard. Um, where do we want to go to now? Let's go to academic and career advising. Then we can do your tab. So this is Academic and Career Advising Center SharePoint. Our goal is to make sure we have resources for both students and advisors for both career and academic advising. So that's been one of our biggest missions is to make sure advisors have the tools they need to feel supported and to do advising well. So if you scroll down a little bit on this page before we click on anything, this is information from 2024 registration. We'll switch over once courses load for spring 25. But that top one, the course registration instructions, that's that's a handout that we give students on how to, yeah, let's just look at it. How to get into degree works. How to log. You sent this out with the. I yeah, did. Yeah. You read it? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I get no. This is golden. We no one responds. I'm like, I don't know if it claims anything. It will be forwarding this to students. Yeah, great. So, yep, how to log into registration. Um, 
some reminders for varsity athletes and how they can get a credit. And this is how to search courses, how to remove courses, how to find your schedule. Just a cool, like everything all in one spot, how to document. Yep. And that's on that course registration instructions. Yeah. And those second half semester courses we were talking about, you can go through the registration system or if you can use this course search. It takes a little time to open. It, can, because... it was really fast this morning, so it'll probably be super slow. Yeah. Again. Course oh, search yeah. is a bit archaic, but it will pull a list of all open second half semester courses for you. We have the parameters in there set already. So if you have any students looking for second half semester courses when you're meeting for pre-reg, feel free to go here. Just, you know, give it a little warm up time. <laughs> I'm just working out with students. Just sit back. It's okay. In two or three minutes, it'll load. Up. <laughs> it's worth the wait. It's it is still, worth the wait. It's still such a good tool. Um, and then, like, we have a lot of the same stuff that John has on his form, uh, but these only show open courses. So, yeah. but his form is on there down at the bottom as well. But if you're looking for, like, oh, I just need a creative thought direction, instead of weeding through, yeah. like, all of them, you can just see, like, what the description is and everything right there. But we won't click it because <laughs> oh, it's... course search just finished. Oh, there we go. There we go. So second these are second half, half courses, right? Yes. So you can see a nice list of what's available. Cool. And so now if we could go back to the PSU Academic and Career and scroll up a little bit. Could you please click on Academic Advising, Faculty and Staff? We are always growing this, always looking to improve it. Um, let's start with the how-to advising guides. We're trying to create a database of how-to guides for advisors, a lot for like new advisors, or even if you've been doing it a long time, some things that come up a lot in our office that people aren't sure of. We tried to create these one-pagers on, you know, how to find an advisee list, which you just got a crash course on. But if people aren't here, they might not know how to add drop a course, um, how to know the difference between a BA versus BS in psychology. Like just some <laughs> just some things that come up in our office that we find ourselves explaining. Okay, can you go back? And then four-year plans. This is one of my favorite resources that we have for advising weeks. It really has saved me. Because, um, yes, you can look up in the catalog what students have, but it's hard to, like, sit down with a student, look at their degree works, um, and tell them what they need. They, they would just have to take notes. So this, if you click on the number four, the big four with a circle around it, these are our four-year plans. They match the catalog. So if there's anything not right in the catalog, then they're probably not right on these forms. So I encourage all programs to take a look to see your programs. Um, but if you could maybe, let's see, is there a business one? Business opens really well. Um, there you go, business administration. So this is, if you scroll up a little bit, this is business administration. So I would sit down with a student with their degree works in front of me, and we would check off the courses that they've taken. You've taken comp, great. TWP, awesome. Um, you've taken intro to marketing and sales, we would check that off. And by the end of this meeting, I'm going to, or that going through degree works, I'm going to see what they need. And I will put that down in the course name. So this person needs finite. So we would put the MA 2210 under course number and finite with business stats in the course name. So we get a list of the courses that they need to take. Then we're going to go to the registration system and I'm going to show them how to look up the courses. And then I'm going to give them their pin and the registration date, which I can put right at the top of this form. So if you scroll to the very top of this form, there's a place for the PIN and the registration date. Um, if you scroll a little to the right, yeah, you can see how many electives this program has. Yeah. So we have one of these for each major. Can you hit the three lines on the very bottom left of this form? This is just a quicker way to find all of the programs instead of scrolling through the tabs, if you hit those three lines, you can find yours. I definitely recommend using these if there's anything we can do to make these forms 
more suitable for what you need, let us know. We're always looking to improve them. Like right now we're going through and putting down if courses have prereqs because a lot of the time you don't really know what the prereq is. So as long as there's not like a whole bunch of prereqs, we're putting it in. Mm -hmm. um, but for those of them that do have a lot of prereqs, we've linked to the catalog on the bottom. Okay, I think we got it. Yeah. So that's from the ACAD page. Yeah, maybe I'll just, can you do advisor resources? I don't think there's much I want to show on here. I just want to like open it. It's B3. Um, so, so all the newsletters we've been sending out filled with lots of information. So we send those out every other week. I really encourage all advisors to read through it. Um, and then we're starting a video series. I've actually done more than what's up there. I just haven't uploaded them yet. Um, but like, do you need to know who the coordinators are for programs or majors and minors? This in particular, it's hard to find the minor coordinators info. It otherwise. is. It's actually now linked. Um, the registrar's office works with us and they're linked to the form. So it's on yeah. the minor form and the major form now. Mm -hmm. So you can get a link, link to both of our program coordinators and we have to update those each semester. Um, the our program coordinators is still on the OAA SharePoint as well. Yeah. And I think, yep, they, yes, you I can think it's there. updated. Uh, but minor coordinators for a long time was hard to find until you all put it together. The GPA calculator, like, there, there's a lot. Yeah. My... I'm kind of obsessed with OneNote, so we've created an advising information OneNote. I think, you know, check it out, make one for yourselves on all the things that would help you. That's just kind of a, like, this is what I use, feel free to use it. Yeah. But yeah, I think that's all in the app, actually, I want to show you. Excellent. So should we go to tab? Tabs. Okay. So this is a little trick I came up with because I was finding myself going into meetings, and, and we schedule meetings back to back, so we've got a lot of advisees. Um, and I was finding myself struggling to sort of start up. It's like, where do I where do I start from? I need to get all my stuff. I got to do all the sign-ins, et cetera. And then I realized I could just make a folder called advising, put it up top here. And then in, I use Firefox, but I think it's basically the same in Chrome, is if you go down to open all in tabs, it just opens all the tabs. Some of which I would have to sign into the first time, but um, but afterwards it doesn't. So I've got navigate there. I've got degree works. Uh, that's so something I need to sign into. So fancy. Uh, so fancy. Just the registration page. Some of our internal IDS stuff. I haven't updated this since last spring, so some of it's actually out of date. Um, here's the home courses one, and then inspired by Kelsey, Hannah created for us a collab and IDS one note. Um, folder so that Anna. we really love. Um, so I put that in there as well because I've put in, it's got sort of our general um, email templates, that sort of thing. Oh, that's awesome. So this is just an easy way to make sure that students coming, I've got one student going out the door and another student coming in, what do I do? Um, or it's the start of the day. I'm like, oh, it's 8.30 in the morning. I don't even remember what my name is. Never mind how to advise. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, and then I just go here and hit open all in tabs. And at least I've got something that I can start from. And if I you know, can say to the student, okay, let's look at your degree works together. That's a good way to start out. So um, that's something that I've been doing for some years now. And it's a real godsend in those moments when you're just like, my brain's fried. I don't even remember how to do this anymore. Just open the tabs and <laughs> choose one and dive into stuff. Okay. Is that it that we want to share? I think so. I think we should open for questions because yeah. we can then um, can show stuff if we need. Not sure it's valuable to have to everything like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you just create a folder. I've got a, a book, folder of bookmarks. I have an advising folder. Yeah. I have a bunch of different things from the care form to advisor resources in there, yeah. but I don't have an open all tabs. Are you using Chrome? I am using Chrome. Yeah, it's different. I would have to look it up. Oh, oh. So are you using Chrome? I was Chrome. using Firebird. There is a way to do it in Chrome. It's just a different terminology. Chrome has just been doing all sorts of weird, different. I've been struggling with Chrome. Uh, yeah. 
with my computer as well. But hmm. I will look it up while we're talking about other stuff. Kelsey, um, yeah. when I'm doing the um, freshman advising meeting on the 15th for nursing students. Yes. yes. Um, so how do I let my advisees know? Is that something you let tell them about or is it something we both tell them about or how do I like get them to come? I would, I would have all of us tell them. I did send, I did create a campaign for nursing students and pre-nursing students to sign up. Um, I've had some challenges with some people being able to sign up and some not. So uh, I think I only have like 20 students signed up, um, but they're 65 were invited. So if you want to help get the word out too, like they know about it okay. and I'll just keep saying to get them to sign up. Okay. And but, so it's something that they sign up for, but they would know how to sign up for that. Yep. Okay. And they then, all um, could you, after that, could you help me maybe set up the campaign for me? I, one person did already email me and said she had a class during that time period. So that, so she said, and I, I said, I'll set up meetings after for after that. So maybe you could help me at some point. Okay. Cause yeah. I don't really know how to do that. that. I'm yeah. sure there's yeah. a how to yeah. video. <laughs> I'll walk you through it. It's okay. fine. <laughs> Okay. I highly Perfect. recommend making making appointments with Kelsey to go go over navigate or or anything else that you want. Um, it's fun for her to get to meet with faculty occasionally, not just students. It is fun. Um, so I figured out with Chrome <laughs> what we need to do. Uh, let me share my screen. Um, there is Chrome. Yep. Um, oops, I shared on the wrong spot. Sorry. Two screens. I haven't been doing a lot of Zoom classes recently. I'm slightly out of track. Yeah, I was too after coming back. So. Uh, cool. Okay, so slightly different. Um, so uh, this isn't up to date. I don't have the same thing here because I, I use Chrome about two or three times a year. Um, but here you have it, but you don't have an open everything. But if I double, if I either right click or on my Apple laptop, two fingers click, Mm -hmm. then you can get open all, open a new window, uh, gotcha. open a new tab group, et cetera. So I have a bunch of stuff in there. Let's see what it does. <laughs> so, do you want to open books and tabs? Sure, why not? <laughs> <laughs> I haven't opened any of these in Chrome in years. But yeah, you see it opens them all in some way or another. So it's doable. It's just a slightly different process. What else can we show you to make your advising life easier? What are some pain points you want? Where where were the forms that for for the majors that you that are all set up and beautiful and pin number at the top and on the academic and career advising? And there center. on PSU advisors. No. Is it back on the okay? So you're gonna start on your my Plymouth. Yeah. And then um, you can type, it's academic and career advising. And then this shows up, do you see this? Yep. Okay, and then scroll down and then academic advising, faculty and staff. And then the number four, for your plan. So they're four-year plan worksheets because we really use them as a registration tool. Yeah. Again, if you need these forms altered in any way to work better for your program, you let us know. So yeah. These are great. One thing to look at with those forms, um, John Kay actually pointed this out. There is a the switch to from INCO to INCAP. Um, not all programs have updated the catalog. So if the catalog isn't updated, those forms aren't going to be updated. Um, so we have to take a closer look at that um, and change it. We haven't made that switch yet, but um, just just keep that in mind. INCAPs cause lots of interesting challenges. All right, well, we are just about at time.
Um, so thank you all for attending. Let us know if you have any questions. Feel free at any time to email me or Telsey. Um, we will also be sending out the link to this um, in a few days when we have the resource page created on the Colab website. So all this information plus some, some links will be available to you there. Thank all you right. guys. Sorry I wasn't able to be in person. <laughs> That's okay. No, we're happy to have you here in any form. Perfect. <laughs> See you next week. I'll be